Welcome to the magical but murderous Mara today. Uh, we are back at the hippo carcass. The hyenas are here. My name is Brentley o. Smith, and for the first time in Kenya, I have Jean Dre on camera. So we're very excited to be sharing our live experiences with you. Remember, this is 100% live from the Maasai Mara in Kenya. And if you have any questions for us, Hit us up on Twitter by using the hashtag Safari Live. Now, this carcass has been here for about four days now. We're convinced this hippo was killed by this clan of hyenas, and uh, they are busy making the most of it. There's probably about seven or eight hyenas in total around, but only one who looks to be having a bit of a struggle with some of the... Yes, you. A bit of the fat that is highly sought after by the predators and hippos have a, a very large subcutaneous fat layer that that hyena is getting well and truly stuck into. And of course at the same time the hyena is having a spa day. Uh, this wonderful volcanic mud. I'm sure we could charge many dollars to uh, submerge someone in it. So I'm not sure if we could do that while there's a rotting hippo carcass in it. Here we go, white-backed vulture. Mm. And there you can see another hyena quickly there. There we go. The vultures are all on the ground. Kylie is wondering, does the hippopotamus smell? Well, Kylie, um, we could probably smell it from a good couple of hundred meters away. And let me think of how to describe the smell. Uh, you, if you live in a big city and, and the refuse gentlemen forgot to move their rubbish or remove the rubbish from the street for about a month, that is exactly what this hippo smells like. It is highly, highly vile. But fortunately, we are well trained in the arts of avoiding or ignoring bad smells because generally where there's a bad smell, there's something very interesting to look at. Now, that hippo skin is on a big male, up to sort of five or six centimeters thick. And you can see how that hyena is actually struggling to cut through. It's using its uh, premolars, uh, which have a sort of sharpened edge, to tr basically like a pair of side cutters to try to slice open that thick hippopotamus skin. And I think what's happened is that they've eaten all the, the good bits that are above the water level uh, as far as they can by putting their heads, oh bless you jean -Dre. Thank you. Um, by putting their heads right inside. But I think all the decent bits now are below the water surface, or water's a strong word, I would say below, below the mud soup. And uh, so that hyena is trying to open up the carcass a little bit more so he can probably get to some of that lovely, gooey, half-rotten, maggot-filled fat. Chris is wondering, did this hippopotamus get stuck or did, was it killed by the hyenas by running it in here? Um, I, 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 I think it was killed by the hyenas. Uh, we didn't see it happen, but uh, from the first morning we got here, judging the tracks uh, of the hippo, mostly because the hyena tracks are a little bit harder to see, and uh, the, the flattened grass, and more so judging by what I heard at night, uh, it was killed by these hyenas. So where we're staying, at the moment is a little bit up on the hill there and uh, you can actually see FC is nearly done. Hi Final Control and of course once Final Control is built we're going to never let the ladies out of it. They're going to have to stay in their office and uh, you see that lovely big window. That's for James, that's not for Final Control. We decided Final Control must be bricked up, kept in the dark, must watch their screens to send us questions on time. Of course, we're only joking. We do let Final Control out every now and then. And then, of course, up on top of the rocks is the absolutely gorgeous Angama Mara. That is North Camp, um, the main area to the right and the guest room, first guest rooms to the left. Now, it looks like a lot of the hyenas have done their feeding for the day and they're, they're lying with the, the, near the vultures out in the, in the back. Oh, there's a hyena moving just to the left a little. There we go, going through the grass. You can see that 
a lot of them, even though uh, they're two-toned hyenas, you can actually see uh, the level that it was sitting in the water, even though it was a long time ago, and that one's quite dry now. Oh, change of mind. Oh, there's another hyena there. Ash is wondering whether the hyenas will get ill from eating the rotting flesh, uh, or will they get sick as the kill starts to rot more. Ash, hyenas are incredible, and they have an immune system nearly as strong as mine, so they can eat pretty much anything and not get sick at all. Now, they're especially designed to be able to, to eat rotting flesh, as the, and that is one of their ecological niches so they don't get sick from rotten flesh and uh, most predators lion leopard will eat something that is so putrid uh, you wouldn't think it possible to digest but their their stomachs are designed they have lots of bacteria and enzymes that enable them to eat the most rotten stuff you've ever seen look at that he's got fat he's got a fat mustache so you can see that 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 was actually probably half rotten hippo fat that was uh, hanging on the lips and uh, what have you heard let's have a look with uh, not much Well, a good morning to a wonderful handle, Blue Butter Frog. It just rolls off the tongue so wonderful this early in the morning. And a Blue Butter Frog would like to know, will all of that hippo be eaten? Uh, almost all the flesh, I think because it's in that mud like that, it's going to be quite difficult for, for the hyenas and the vultures to, to get to that, but it'll rot into the soil, which will actually add nutrients to the soil. Nothing really goes to waste here. Not even the hyenas are going to be able to crack some of the bigger bones on that hippo. Um, and it'll take a long time for those bones to break down. Other animals will utilize those bones though. Porcupine, rodents will chew on the bones uh, to, to, to extract calcium. And even giraffe, strange enough, will pick up a smaller bone to chew on. But eventually, probably in about 10 to 20 years, there'll be nothing left. But from a, from a, a sort of meat and, 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 and muscle point of view and sinew and organs it will all be gone in a couple of days the bones will last the teeth will last the longest and uh, and, and that is all that will be left of this uh, hippo now this hippo might be a fossil one day because it is it lying it's been killed in this particular section where there's a seep that is getting bigger and bigger every year as the different animals utilize it so if, if we wanted to leave something behind or you wanted to make a fossil this is probably the type or not probably this is the, the type of area where, where a fossil could be made so who knows maybe in a hundred thousand years of time someone is going to dig up this beast and hopefully they're still around but if they're not uh, we're going to have a lovely fossilized hippo Newly would like to know, can the hyena get stuck in the mud? Uh, oh, hyenas are quite dexterous. I mean, there's always a possibility that they could get stuck in the mud, but I would say the hyena would have to be quite old or injured to truly get stuck in the mud. Uh, I think in this type of mud, probably not, but there's always a possibility, and that's the one thing you gotta remember. We are live uh, coming to you from the middle of the African bush, and anything is possible. Now, as that hyena munches on, you can see that fat stuck, almost glued around its canine there. And uh, sorry for our sensitive viewers, but a hyena's got to do what a hyena does. And uh, um, we'll probably check on this carcass a little bit later in the drive, but I think uh, we might go look for some more savory uh, sightings, maybe some lions or, or cheetah. And we're gonna, this morning we're going to make a mission down towards the main river crossings in the Mara and uh, see if old Scar has managed to pop across the river for a visit again. But we will come back and check on the sighting. Now, I've got some driving to do, but it sounds like Taylor's already on the road, so let's go see where she's driving to.